Hi, you know me, Reverend Dr. Cat, and today is Chakra 3. Chakra 3 is all about food, and I've got a good new friend with me here. Edward Cooper, also known as Eddie, also known as El Guavo, is here today. He's a gardener extraordinaire, and he's going to share with us some of his tips with gardening and how he's produced a whole harvest of vegetables that we've been able to enjoy and turn into a seven bean chili. So, here we are in the studio, Eddie. It's so nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Everybody's out there. You wanna say hi? <laughs> hi. Hi. We're gonna be on Facebook Live pretty soon. I brought my phone and I also have this cool new device. It's what they call, what do they call these? Notepads? I guess. Wait. It's big. Oh, it's a tablet. A tablet, yeah. So that'll be cool to play with and get that Facebook up. We're hoping to do it for the last show of the season. But today we're doing the Chakra 3, and Chakra 3, um, your mom helped me the last time on last season when I did Chakra 3, and we did a whole bunch of superfood cookies. So you know I've talked with you about the importance of that 27 feet. Did you know it's 27 feet in there? No. Yeah, it's 27 feet. How big is a football field? I don't know. How, I mean, wh how big is it? It's pretty big, right? Yeah, it's pretty big. All right, 27 feet is how many yards? We're gonna do some math, three yards <laughs> to a foot. It's like nine, what's three times, 27 is nine, right? Three. Nine yards of, nine yards of actual life, life living within our body in a movement that comes from our um, stomach, which is on the left side of our body, and our liver, which is on the right side of our body. So when we eat the food that we eat, digestion starts in the mouth and it works its way down. We have all these bugs living inside of our body that are healthy microbial forms of life that digest the food that we eat and then help that process so that our body picks up the nutrient value and then sends it to our organs and to our brain so that we're a fully functioning human. So you know me, I'm all about clean organic food and I think it's really important to, even if you're not eating clean organic food all the time, to supplement it into the food diet. You know, even a once a week really good organic meal for the family can help to heal a lot of the issues that come from eating the herbicides and the pesticides and the GMOs and the preservatives that are in all of our food every day. But what's exciting about what you did, Eddie, is you got inspired and I want you to share what happened, why did you decide, where'd this garden come from? Because it's all about being your best you, so something, some kind of bug hit you. So basically, what happened was I watched a YouTube video online about breeding tomatoes and it was really interesting to me because I've never seen a kid my age do something like that so I got my own tomato plant and I grew some tomatoes and they were so good and I was very interested in having my own garden with a variety of different fruits and vegetables and other things and so yeah that's how I got started and you're living in a suburban community so you're not using a community garden you're do using a backyard garden am I correct a not my backyard it's more my front yard but yeah I have my raised bed and I have my own mini miniature garden and I have my vegetables in there I think that's fabulous, Eddie. I know that you harvested some of the vegetables and gave some of them to me, and there's actually some of your peppers in this pot. Yeah, I know. And they are so delicious eating them raw. I love them. I was able to go to the house when Eddie was doing some of the harvesting, and he shared uh, the, um, was it the chard? What did you share with me? What was the leafy, leafy vegetable? It was kale. kale. I thought it was arugula at first, but uh -huh. it is actually kale. Arugula looks kind of like a. It's the kale is red Russian kale, and so it looks a lot like arugula. Okay. But 
the red Russian kale, it's more, it has more, like, edges. Okay. It has, like, little lumps on the sides. In arugula, it's like a, more of a leafy, it has, like, spikes going up. Okay. And so this morning I figured that out. All right. Well, that's definitely a learning learning process because this is your first time garden, am I correct? Mm, yeah. But what an extraordinary garden you, you made. And, and that is just in one season. So I think what, what you were able to do was to see, actually, you know, they say there's a saying. I'm sure everybody's seen it on the Facebook because it's been around for a while. Grow gardens, not lawns makes sense right yeah except what ends up happening a lot of times is within communities people don't want the gardens on the front but it's on yours is on the side but they don't like it on the front because of zoning and things like that sometimes people can get fussy about they want to see the lawns but you know then they use all that Monsanto to put on the lawns to make the lawns look nice because it's got the herbicide pesticide stuff in it <sighs> that kills the bugs but I asked Eddie, what did you do about the bugs? Because once there's a garden, there's going to be bugs. Because they're going to come and go, ooh, food, right? Because if it doesn't rot or sprout, throw it out. Why is it rotting? There's, you know, it's kind of dying. It's getting eaten. It's turning brown, right? But what did you do with your bugs? So basically, I didn't want to kill the bugs, so basically I just covered them up with the soil just to like let them know that it's not the right place to be. But more eating-wise, it was the squirrels eating my tomatoes, my peppers. So basically, I had to keep more watch of it. Squirrel watch, huh? So, you know, they used to do like um, a scarecrow to keep the... Uh, certain things away there used to be a scarecrow mm -hmm. and the scarecrow would be to scare the crows away because the crows would come and but squirrels are another matter entirely you'd have to probably put a cage around it to keep the squirrels out huh mm -hmm. did they steal a bunch of your your produce they didn't steal any they just chewed on it and then it fell off and then they ran ran with it got caught <laughs> whoops <laughs> Here he comes, quick run. And then they take one bite out of it and then it rots. Mm -hmm. The whole plant rots when it, I don't know what happens, but it must be something where like, when the inside of the fruit touches air, mm -hmm. it like rots. Mm -hmm. Because what do you think's on the outside of that fruit? Skin. Yes. So just as our, we have a porous, breathable skin, we breathe through this, we absorb through this but it also is a protective shield for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some fruit has hair. Some mm -hmm. produce has hair on it. <laughs> like peaches. Yeah, that, I mean, hairy, like you know, you go, what's that for? I bet it was to keep the bugs off, probably designed by nature over time. But let's just talk about the tummy because I think it's really important. I know I always get that kind of like sense of, well, here we go, we're gonna talk about the tummy but I made something good for the tummy. And it's old time food and it's not very expensive. And it's that time of the year because we're in October. So it's ooh, almost Halloween, you yep. know? And so everything's getting cold. It's raining and it's cold outside today. So I started this container of chili uh, 24 hours ago. And it's been on a slow cooker. Now, you know, I love the idea of the slow cooker because we can get a bunch of ingredients in here. Even if you are um, a meat eater, you can get the lower grade of the meat and you know get the grass-fed beef. And it's available now, even at Stop and Shop. And so you can get that lower grade of the meat. And, and when you um, slow cook the food, it's less, it's a less of a carcinogen. And it, that's why it's a benefit to our health to eat raw, because obviously there's no cooking, versus throwing something on the grill with the charcoal, and basically you're having, you know, um, a carcinogen dinner. And then you hope that you've got enough cancer-fighting ability in your body to balance out that, because everybody has cancer cells in their body. So we know that now. So 
a lot of the disease with this cancer, we talk about it as genetic. It's genetic because we pass it on through our bodies to the bodies that we recreate through our production. So yes, I, I won't argue the fact that it is genetic, but you know we can change that by changing the uh, structure of where to, however we were raised. We can change who we are through the form of the body because the human body has a capacity to heal itself. And I'm not talking about some diseases that where people are really suffering and it's gone so far. You know, it's very hard to heal something at that stage. And that's usually when it ends up at an alternative's door. And then the alternative healer is left with the soul that's barely there. And the medical system has, they can't do anything. So and they expect the alternative healer to do in something. But at that point, it's, you know, it's, it's long overdue. So let's start now. And we know that we have control over what we eat all the time. And uh, so making the choices. This has got seven cans of organic, 15 ounce cans of organic variety of beans. White, kidney, black, black pinto. What else did I put in here? I put a little list for us. Kidney, red lentils, pinto with the navy. The great northern is a white bean, so there's the two different white beans. Again, all organic. And it doesn't break the bank to get the beans. And even if you're doing a bean dish once a week, it's going to save a lot. So the other thing that you want to put in this particular pot that I was working with is the vegetables. So I used your um, peppers. And what I did was I took a, one whole onion and I sauteed the peppers with garlic and the onion in a little bit of olive oil, about two tablespoons. That's the amount of fat in this dish. And it's good um, fat because olive oil is very good for us. And then I did six cloves of garlic. So it was a, a, it's got a good strong garlic and a half a head of celery, um, a red pepper, and then three cans of whole peeled tomatoes. Now I know you all had a whole bunch of tomatoes because I saw what your mom did this summer. What'd she do with those tomatoes? There was something about a sauce. Oh, she made a sauce and it was really good. <laughs> it was like, the, she, um, there was a ton of leftovers. She made a lot of it, I was really happy. And I, mm, I ate a lot. But that was all your tomatoes to see yeah. that being turned over into yummy food. And did you freeze some? Mm, no, it was all the sauce. <laughs> you ate it. Yeah. Yeah. That's always a sign that you did good if it gets consumed, right? And then, um, so yeah, so what I did was though, I just picked up the organic whole peeled uh, tomatoes. I like to get them whole because when you're putting them in for that amount of time, it, you don't want it to get too soupy, so they'll break down slower, and that makes it nice. So it's a thicker uh, pasted uh, dish. And then I added in about a quarter a cup or a half a cup of the red lentil, and you know the lentils are good for us. So all together, it's about seven different beans, and then you know the beans. I just jotted down a few things about beans. Bean is a protein, and it's known to help reduce cancer, and it prevents a fatty liver, and it makes for a better heart, and it's antioxidants. They're great for uh, helping with diabetes and for glucose metabolism. So beans, beans, beans are the magical fruit right? So they cause gas. So some people are really intolerant to beans, and that's why that, that whole beano industry. But I mean, check and make sure you're using organic beans. You may find that the difference of intolerance has nothing to do with the beans. It may have something to do with the chemicals that are in the beans. So just, you know, check on that. Uh, and allergies come and go, so sometimes we can, we can work with an allergy and we can heal it. The um, seasonings I brought here, do you want to help me out with the seasonings, Eddie? Mm -hmm. 
The seasonings I brought, because I use extra seasoning, for example, the cumin. That's a nice hot seasoning. We have that camera right there where Tyler is. See the red light? Perfect. And that's a good seasoning. And um, of course the organic chili seasoning and the canine. So I put in all the different seasonings to add that extra oomph. Uh, you want this chili hot. I save putting it too hot. I make a mild middle chili and then I bring the extra seasonings so that a person could put it at whatever heat temperature. There's enough that's been in there for 24 hours and then anything that's going to add it in will we're like Emerald would say, bam, right? He would bam it up. And then here's the surprise element. I put in turmeric. <clears throat> That's one of the surprise elements. And then another surprise element that I put into the chili is a corn. I bought a bag of sweet frozen organic corn and I put that in. And I also put in a tiny little bit of raw organic honey. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of different things that you can put chocolate into chili. You know, those chili chocolate bars are delish, but you can actually, so you have many undertones. So it's not just like open a can of chili, but it's like kind of like a, a nice bottle of, well, a nice bottle of wine that has several notes to it. You can turn your chili and its cans into that if you're willing to put them all into a crock pot and let it sit for 24 hours. You don't have to do anything except enjoy it in the end. And that's what we'll be doing at the end of the show. Um, yeah, so the other thing about beans, and I know we have probably about five minutes left coming up to the show, is that it really does help for a younger looking uh, body. Why? Because we heal from the inside out. So if your body is being given really good nutrients that are feeding the body properly, the outside is going to reflect that. Your hair, your nail, your skin, you know, the way you think, how well you sleep. So having veggies and fish and fruit and olive oil and legumes and, you know, the fermented foods, that's all part of this. So beans are really part of your health in every way, how we're going to feel, except if you're a little gassy. And then, you know, you have to see if you have a bean intolerance and, and it's about healing that because it means something's not happy inside of your stomach. And then beans are really good for um, uh, your vitamins. But then I wanted to talk about the gardening because you did a little bit of the gardening, which is not big gardening, but if you did a couple of hours a week, gardening is really good. And the Michigan State University put a, a study out with the CDC and the Journal of Health Psychology, and they've said that gardening on a weekly basis is, is the best thing you could do for your blood pressure, for your bones, to relieve stress, and to ha be a centered human being. So connecting with the earth is very grounding. Mm -hmm. It's a very healthy thing to do. You went into the school system, didn't you, Eddie? Mm -hmm. What did you bring the, your vegetables in and share with everybody? No, I just brought it for my school lunch. You brought it for your school lunch? Yeah. Did you get to tell anybody at school about your garden at all? Mm, yeah, my friends. Yeah. What would be one thing you would tell your friends right now about the garden if you had something to tell them about the garden? Well, not necessarily my garden I would tell them about. I would tell them to garden. Like, if they have free time, ask their, par ask their parents to, you know, buy, like, some seeds, you know, maybe you c like to like start a garden, like just to get the start, just to start, just like get some seeds, some dirt from outside and get it, put it in like a egg carton and put all your seeds in there and then water them every day. And yeah, that's basically what I tell And them. I think I remember coming to the house and didn't you have them on the kitchen counter? Where did you have your egg cartons? Um, I didn't have egg cartons because I didn't start, I tried to start, but I failed. And then later I tried again when I got my seed planter mm -hmm. and it worked much better for me. It was very easier. 
And what is this seed planter that you could tell everyone to, to, that maybe would help them too? Um, it's not necessarily the seed planter. It's the um, it's the soil. It's the soil. Isn't that interesting? It's organic soil. So I don't know why, but the organic soil just made it grow faster. I had my kale up in three days. That's another sign of good things that organics does because yeah. organics are good. So basically it was one sprout. So by three days I already had a sprout and then the next day one other sprout came up but it took a little longer for the third one to come up but it came up. Mm -hmm. And yeah, once they get big enough you have to transplant them mm -hmm. into the ground. Because it's life. Mm -hmm. You've created life. And once you put them in the ground they get much, much bigger. And you prepared that ground, so it's a up bed that you took the earth and you combined mm -hmm. the local earth with the organic earth and you made a, a safe bed that you had to watch to keep the squirrels away. Yeah. Yeah, that was the biggest thing probably. And and also just making sure that they were watered properly and, and then being able to see that. It's kind of cool, isn't it, to watch, see how a plant can change from a seed to a, an actual vegetable that you can consume. It's wild, isn't it? Yeah, so funny story. My tomato plant in my garden, I didn't even mean for it to be there. I, ac I had accidentally dropped a tomato plant mm -hmm. into the ground when I was um, watering my plants. Mm -hmm. I, so I was changing, I was putting my pumpkins into the raised bed, and so I was putting the new tomato seeds in the planter so I can get more tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And I, what I, whilst I was doing that, I dropped one of the seeds into the raised bed, mm -hmm. and a tomato plant popped up. And, it and that grew, was a happy seed. And it grew tomatoes. <laughs> it's as soon as it touched that earth, it said, this is good earth. That's the same earth that you covered the, the bugs with and said, don't bother my, 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 my plants, and the bugs didn't bother your plants. So something definitely Jack and the Beanstalk earthy about that, right? I mean, you know, sounds pretty magical. It's a nice place to go out and just be in your garden at the end of the day. I want to thank you for coming on and being on the show and sharing some of your gardening tips with, with the viewers. Now I know that winter's coming, so... What do you do in the winter as a gardener to keep your gardening, uh, you know, kind of, you know, they look at the seed catalogs or what do you, what are your plans for this winter to prepare for your garden for the spring? Well, to s to keep them safe, I have this thing that I put over them, and it's basically something that keeps them safe. Mm -hmm. It's plastic, and you put it over the raised bed, mm -hmm. and it has a zipper so you can close it, and it keeps it so like. It doesn't get like it doesn't get ruined by the snow. Yeah, it sounds like that's a really nice protective cover, so that when you do want to go to plant in the spring, your earth is not frozen like a rock. I think that's good thinking, wise thinking, Eddie. I think you're a smart young guy, and I really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing, you know, yourself and your tips with the viewers, and giving me some ingredients to make this chili with. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. I know we're all waiting to eat it. Mm. We probably could open it up now on the show while we're going and closing out. I don't see why not. What do you think? Mm, that sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. So thank you all for coming in and joining. Your best you.